Now, we're joined in studio by James McGrath. I need to find out about this story of how James made it all the way from Tipperary to Tennessee. Well, I can tell you how I got to Nashville now was... was um, A long journey, I would imagine. It was a long journey, but what the icing on the cake was a poker game, would you believe? I um, I came... I ended up chopping a league final of a poker tournament. And that, that covered the airfare to um, to Nashville. This sounds so. like Leonardo DiCaprio in, in <laughs> Titanic. Where yeah. so, so you got it. How, what, you won a ticket, did you? I won the money for a ticket. Did it was you? always my dream. <laughs> so um, I had finally seen some of the light and I, I stopped drinking. And I said, I'm going to try and get to Nashville. And I'm, I'm not the best at saving money. So me being me, I said, I'd, I'd, I'd start playing poker. <laughs> Okay. And, um, I'll stop drinking, but I'll start playing poker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I got quite lucky because I'm not great at the poker, you know. I got um, I got lucky, and I got I ended up winning the price of a ticket, and I went to Nashville. That is an amazing story. We'll hear more from James McGrath in a few minutes, and we get a couple of songs on the radio from his new album as well. Now, Megan Maroney, new song. This is called "I'm Not Pretty" on Tip FM. Now, I'm chatting to James McGrath this week on the American Country Show. And James, I want you to take me back to the very beginning. How did it start for you? I'm playing since I'm a kid, really. With your dad, because he was in a group, wasn't he? Yeah, my dad's still in a group, a band called Ebony. They're still going, are they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And dad would have played with uh, Louise Morrissey and, okay. and stuff like that. Dad's a, a bass player. So were you with him on the road on tour and you used to see how it all worked? No, no, no. no I never actually joined dad. Like that, I've often got up and sang a song here and there, but no, we've never joined up as a group. I'd probably kill him with my timing. <laughs> <laughs> and that, what kind of is that country then? Yeah, that's big into country. Yeah. So there's a difference between the country and the social Irish music country scene, and and your country in Nashville, because you've got that Nashville twang. You, yeah, in, you, you're in, aware of that. How did that come about? Um, it was it was quite conscious, to be honest, because I I really enjoy country, and. I said I'm going to go to Nashville. I'm going to try and meet up with some guys and write some songs and just bring out a couple of country songs. It was very um, conscious that I wanted to have a couple of country songs, but it was very important that I tried to sing it in my own accent. Yeah. Without sounding too Irish, but keeping it authentic. And I hope I achieved that to, to a certain degree. I heard somebody say once that it's, it's, it's hard not to sing in an American accent almost when you sing country, is it? Yeah. I'll tell you one thing I've noticed. So I was really getting into the country and the Cajun stuff and the bluegrass stuff while I was here, before Nashville. Yeah. And I was really starting to put on a twang. And only when I listened back, I, I wasn't very happy that I was putting on the twang. But when I got to Nashville, it actually brought the Irishness back out in me. Because you weren't going to stand out, out country and them guys. Like, they're, they are country. Did they notice the twang? I'm not sure if they noticed it or I was self-conscious myself because... I said, um, I'm not singing in my own voice here. And it brought back out my own voice. Okay. I found going to America brought back the Irishness, actually, in the in the voice. I thought, you would think we'll go the other way, but actually it brought back out my yeah, own Yeah, I mean, when I say there's a twang, there is from an Irish point of view, but over there you must sound like a real Irish. Yeah, um, I yeah, do, yeah. Yeah, of course, it's the same. I mean, I, I don't think I sound Irish, but the minute I go abroad, it's like, ah, oh, you're from Ireland. Yeah, yeah, and a couple of my friends over there were like, don't. Don't change it. Like, actually enhance it and go with it. I just I just like that it it brought me back to myself a little bit. You're from Nina. Yeah. So you started in Nina. Um, yeah. You didn't always sing country. It was kind of folky more at the start, wasn't it? Or, or how would you describe it? At the start, it was actually rock. I rock. was in a heavy rock band when we were younger. Heavy rock. Okay. And then it got folky. Yeah. Then it kind of got indie. And then... This was during the 90s and noughties? Or when, when did you yeah, start? Yeah, the early 90s. It was kind of indie. And were you into country or was there all, ever a sort of a, a, an itch there to, to go to Nashville or to get into the country music Well, I scene? always wanted to go to Nashville and I always had country in me. Like, we're from a massive country house. Like, my mother is just the best woman you'll ever meet with American country. Like, in Sunday mornings there when I used to have a hangover, I'd be walking up by Trisha Yearwood <laughs> and all that and it would be just absolutely brilliant. Like, you'd be... Mam had real good American country taste and, like, of course, Dad did... That goes without saying, but I grew up in a house with American country playing all the time, so it just eventually came out in me. The old classic country, like uh, yeah. Johnny Cash, Chris Christopherson type of... Uh, yeah, yeah, ma'am. Ma I'm, I'm, just, I'm just imagining Sunday morning coming down there now in, yeah. in Nina. Yeah, like um, 
Mam used to listen to um, Chris Christopherson. Yeah, but who who else? Like Seven Spanish Angels. Willie yeah. Nelson. Yeah, yeah, uh, is one of her favorite songs. And like I, I've been listening to that since I was a kid. All that stuff that would influence you definitely, I suppose. Um, tell me now about how then after the poker game. Tell tell me about the trip to, to Nashville. What what happened exactly? What and happened? how did you make contacts? Because did you have contacts over there? No, 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 no. A, f- a good friend of mine. Uh, Dylan Walsh is his name actually a fine singer songwriter so big shout out to Dylan Walsh yeah. you should check him out uh, Dylan uh, got me in touch with another song- singer songwriter Steph Murphy um, another Irish guy Dublin he was out in Nashville and they put me in touch with a girl called Mandy and Mandy gave me a room and it just w- went from there to there and Steph was coming home he had a regular gig that he'd done in a in a bar called Drifters in East Nashville and Steph had a word with the guy uh, Blake was his name a lovely guy and asked could I cover could I just take over Steph's Thursday night gig uh-huh. and that was my first gig in Nashville and I took over that then really and yeah. so so you went to Nashville with uh, nothing no? nothing and I, I actually had never met Steph or Dylan either it was just through a friend actually the so what did you away. you won a one way ticket to Nashville in the poker game was it or what no did, I just won I, you, I, well you won the money but you, you just bought did you just buy a one way ticket was it no I got a return and what was the intention to stay for how long? I hadn't, just to get there. Just to get there. Just to get there. So you landed this gig on on Music Row, was it in, in, in well somewhere in Nas- downtown Nashville? Was East it? Nashville, yeah. kind of a trendy up and coming spot in um, in this kind of a barbecue pub, Drifters Bar. And oh, what were you playing? What were you singing? All my own stuff. Yeah, and any cover I knew. I'm not great. Like I don't have the repertoire of covers that many men probably should have at my age. But um, whatever cover I knew, I'd throw it in. You know, but mostly my own songs. And did somebody spot you, or what, what happened after that? And so what happened after that is a friend of mine that um, I used to talk to on the phone for years said if I got to America, he'd come and he'd manage me. And I had kind of forgot that that conversation ever happened. But I was playing one night in, in Drifters and uh, I see a $100 bill going into the bucket. And I was like, there was only two or it was a quiet night. And uh, it turned out it was uh, it was my friend that I had been talking to all them years ago. And he just said, uh, it's great to see you over here. I heard you were playing. Yeah. Are you still on for me managing you? And that's how the whole Shamrock Entertainment Group started. More from James McGrath shortly. We'll find out about the new album he's just recorded in Nashville. And we'll play King George straight next. Hi, it's Carol from Premier Country. Join me. I'm chatting to James McGrath this week on the show. And James, I'd love to find out the story about how the new album came about in Nashville. So I went down to Music Row and I heard about this... NSAI it's a songwriters association Mm -hmm. and you join up and um, I was just joining up that day I met a guy called Max and he was um, he was signing me up and there was two songwriters having a chat in the in the lobby and their artist had um, cancelled on him to write with him that day and good luck and just jokingly uh, Ralston uh, turned to me and said you're hardly an artist are you and I said I am I'd love to write with you and we ended up writing two of the songs that were on the album. That day, Potluck... Two songs in one day. Yeah, two guys, uh, Scott Volkerding and Rostin Wells. We wrote a couple... We wrote. We actually wrote a couple of songs, but we two songs that made the album that day. Totally from scratch? From scratch. We wrote them in 20 minutes. So you ended up, I think, writing nine of the 12 songs on the album? On yeah. The right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, uh, which songs... So, If I Were Me... Yeah. And Easier Done Than Said... Well, they're two brilliant songs. We're playing them a lot here on Tip FM. Easier done than said. That was our premier country song of the week. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we, we, pl- we play it a lot. And I've just now jumped on this, If I Were Me. Yeah. And then, like, in brackets, at 23, which is just, <laughs> it's just such a great play. It yeah. really is. Thanks. And I wanted to ask you about you at 23. Can you remember where you were at 23, what you were doing? I was doing this just with a lot more drink and, <laughs> and um... <laughs> you know, I had to Google because I was thinking the song 23, I, I was kind of saying, I wonder what James was doing when he was 23. So I couldn't find out how old you were. So yeah. I had to ask ChatGBT. I said, how old is James McGrath, country singer from Nina? And it, it fired out at me. It spat out that uh, you were 23 in 2015. I'm, I, I wouldn't be able you, to... You were a young lad. So, so this song that you wrote, If I Were Me... It, it isn't really looking back at you when you were 23, is oh, it? Oh, it is, it is. Is it? Yeah. It's for anyone to look back, because at 23 you're in your absolute 
prime yeah. and you're, you're enjoying life and you're probably taking things for granted and you're... And what would you do differently? Because the song is sort of about doing the bigger things differently but doing a lot the same as well, isn't it? Yeah, you, you'd, you'd think I'd have learned my lesson but no, I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably still party and I'd Ah, probably... you wouldn't. Would you not? <laughs> <laughs> if I went back, I would, yeah. Would you, yeah. But I'd, just a couple of things I'd have... Um, I'd have been kinder in relationships and I'd have probably been kinder to myself and walked away from some of them and a couple of the bigger when it comes to love and stuff like that. But, but all the it, other stuff, I had a good time, you know. And would it change where you are today if you did something differently at 23 then? Probably not, no. I, I feel like I always had a... had a, a lot of people around me mightn't believe this, but I feel there was always a compass in me that I, I knew where I had to go. It took I always take the long way, but... I knew I had to stick at the music and I knew um, someday something might click. It mightn't be, um, I mightn't be the next Bruce Springsteen, but if, if I get to play some shows in concert halls around the country and get to do a couple of gigs and tours in America, so that, that's making it for me. Like, If I were me at 23, I'd still be at the bar and the last to leave. If I were me. And it's great. It's such a pleasure to have James McGrath in studio with me this evening. That's the new song called If I Were Me. And I'm just wondering, James, how are you promoting this new album? We're we're trying to get get, get it, as much airtime as it can. It's, it's all about airplay, really, isn't airplay, it? Airplay. Yeah. And I suppose if I was on the road gigging every night, we'd be gathering a little bit more traction, I'd, I would hope. But it's, uh, it's tough at the minute because I can't play anything. I can't play live gigs until I get over. I have an operation coming up. So... Is that when, serious, is it? I have uh, Crohn's disease, yeah. and they've decided now it's come to um, it's come to a point in my Crohn's disease that I have to get a part of my bowel removed, and um, they're doing. I'm going in on the fourth of November, and uh, I have that journey ahead of me. And so I was meant to do a five week American tour from the 29th of October on, but we had to postpone it till March. So um, a tour of radio stations? No, or a tour of gigs in America. Gigs? We oh. had a five week tour mapped out oh, in wow. America. Oh dear. But they're so kind and the promoters and like Shamrock are so good that they've worked out with everyone that it's just rescheduled. So I didn't actually lose a gig and I'm very grateful to anyone. If you hear this, thank you for holding on to me and I'll try and make the gigs even more special when I do get there. And oh, whereabouts in the States are they? New York, Boston, there was Philadelphia, Buffalo. Then we were going Florida back to Nashville, out to East Tennessee, and then Chicago was new. So, um, yeah, there was a big... And have you a fan base over there? W- no. <laughs> That's honesty. Like, well, how, how do you get people to those I, gigs then? I say no. Like, I do, I do, I do and I don't. Like, I'd always self-deprecate, but the lads of Shamrock are saying they're getting messages and they're getting people texting in saying they're looking for T-shirts and hats and when can James come to this town? And when can James... So, it's starting. And it's all social media, is it? Social media, and I've been there three times now, and I've, I've gigged when I've been there. So you have a tough road ahead of you with the operation then in November. Is it, what's the recovery like on that? Um, they said three months before I'm back to, to, to normal. Does it affect your performances, your your vocals? I've Googled all that. I've got it, <laughs> Seemingly not. Hopefully not. And is this has this always been uh, sort of hanging over you, like for years, or what way has it worked? Yeah, I've had it maybe seven years now, and... Um, I'm all. I go in for infusions every four weeks, and, and every six weeks for an iron infusion. But four weeks for the main infusion, and it's always uh, it's always catching me. Or if I have to go to America, we have to plan around it, and I have to come back. So I'm hoping the silver lining to this operation is all that will end. It'll give me a bit more of quality of life and a bit more freedom. And the plan is then to, to to do this tour in the states. Yeah, and then then what? back are you are you going to base yourself over there you're are you still a nina nina boy after all yeah i'm 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 a nina boy but um i would say i would say there'll be a there'll be a period in 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 my story where i would like to base myself there for a while but i don't it's really important to me that i i um i start playing in ireland more like i should have played um i should have played many more towns in ireland that i've not not been to oh why didn't you just absolute (laughs) drinking (laughs) drinking and I'd, I'd build up a bit of momentum and then I'd go off to England for six months and I'd build a little... I, I was never good at uh, doing it in a row. I'd, I'd I'd go off to England and live there for six months and then come back and I just scattered a bit. But in the last nine months, there seems to be a bit of structure. 
And are those days gone? Do you do you think you're you're finished with those wild drinking days then? They're gone for now anyway. We'll wait till we'll, we'll, we'll wait till to see if we make a bit of money. We'll see. <laughs> More from James McGraw in a few minutes. Uh, we get the story behind Easier Done Than Said and how James became a friend with a music legend from Tipperary. For some classic US country now, this is Jody Messina and I'm All Right on Tip FM's American Country Show. Well, it's been a long time. Glad to see your face. I knew. I hope you're enjoying the chats with James McGrath this evening. I'm going to play the song Easier Done Than Said, which you know well. We've been playing it for quite a few weeks now. And James, I'd love to find out about it and how the song actually came about. Easier Done Than Said, Scott said he had that title for um, a long time and he had no song around it. And he asked me, had I had, had I any ideas? I told him, it's the strong silent type, isn't it? It's like my dad or it's like... Um, it's your typical manly man that won't talk about his problems and, and he's like, Yeah, that's great and then we between the three of us then we, we, we had a concept that we'll talk for the men that can't talk about their feelings in this song. This is for the men that don't talk the lovey dovey stuff. But actions speak louder actions than words. Speak than louder than words. So we, we, we just wanted to represent that man in this song. Uh, are you that man? No, 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 God. no, 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 <laughs> no, this song is not about me. <laughs> if any girls out there that have been with me will say, God, no, he'd ring 30 times, he'd sh- wouldn't shut up. Tip FM's American Country Show, where Tipperary meets Tennessee this evening. I'm chatting to James McGrath, and that is his brilliant song, Easier Done Than Said. It's top quality, it really is. And I think it would not be out of place on the Billboard Country Charts. Thanks so much. Thanks. I'm very I'm very proud of it. And um, Peter Maher just is something else. Like he, it's great production on it. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's got a studio there in Clock Jordan, Peter does. Yeah, Middle Walk Studios. A big shout out to Peter. None of this would be possible without Peter. I see you reference drinking, smoking, gambling, women and religion in the album. Which yeah. is, which is Which is 12 tracks. It's called Can't Get Out, the album. Uh, we've heard two of the tracks there. So are they all similar to that? or Those two are the most pop country. Can't Get Out is country. Just country. Yeah, pure country. We have a White House Road. We have a Tyler Childers cover on it. That's um, kind of bluegrass, Cajun country. So, yeah, and Hold On would be something country. But, like, Rainy Night in Soho, there's a tri- tribute to Shane McGowan. So there's your Irish. And, as I said, nine originals and three covers, including that Rainy Night in Soho. Tell me about Shane, because uh, you, you met Shane. You were a good friend of Shane. Yeah, Shane was, Shane was my idol. And then, very luckily, yeah, Shane was my friend. Shane. How did you meet well, we're from Nina. The first time I met Shane was in an early house in in Nina in Philly Rhines. I was I was going for a cure, and Shane came in the in the back door, and we just spoke organically. And uh, I gave him a lighter, and we spoke about his song, The Donegal Express, because Shane, I was saying, Shane, I'm a big fan. He said, Really, what song? And I was like, uh, The Donegal Express, and he, he was happy that I picked that song. And, we sang it, and we drank a few whiskeys, and I didn't see Shane then for a long time after that. Like, he wouldn't have known me, but a few years afterwards, through a great friend of mine, Tom, Tom Cray, and Scruffy Kenny, and uh, Philly Ryan, and, like, they're friends of Shane. And then I was brought into the circle, and I got to go with them to concerts and just hang out with them and really become friends, you know? And did you sing that in Phillies with Shane? Did you sing with Shane in Phillies, or, like, to the public, or was it just at the bar? Out the back that morning, yeah. We sang, um, we sang the Donegal Express just to one another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was 19 and I remember being so embarrassed that I had highlights in my hair. And I was like, oh my God, I've, I don't know why I was so embarrassed about that, but I was like, why have I highlights? I never ever thought about getting highlights or anything like that again. And here I am meeting my meeting idol. Meeting my idol with yeah. highlights in my hair. I was like, oh my God, I'll never do that again. I was embarrassed. And, and, and uh, Shane dying then, did that hit your heart? Yeah, massive. It's still, it's a massive hole. Like even if I didn't, if, even if I hadn't have got that lovely opportunity to become friends with him, it would have been massive because he's so ma- massive in the music world to me. I think he's a giant of songwriting. I think he's authentic. He's real. I think it's everything the modern world is lacking. Shane had, has, because he's still there in that yeah. realm. But So then there's an extra impact because he actually became my friend and he lives on, you know. Uh, they're doing fabulous stuff like... Siobhan 
um, Shane's sister Siobhan invited me to a lovely um, evening. They had a unveiling of the mural in Nina. It's fabulous for yeah. him, and it was. We were just talking. It was such a positive day. Like and Victoria spoke lovely too. Like they both, Siobhan and Victoria, just done Shane so proud. There was so much light and joy in the town, and it really was a special day. It was one of them days that would give you goosebumps thinking back about it because everyone was sharing stories, and all of Shane's group. Something Shane always done was he joined people from such different um, walks of life. Mm -hmm. Like you could have a judge and a criminal in the one room having a, having a drink because they all were friends with Shane. I just thought it was fabulous the way he brought everyone together, you know. That's what music does. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lovely tribute to Shane. And the album then, it's out. It's called Can't Get Out. You're you're promoting it, obviously, on, on your social channels. Is it is it selling or what, what, what's... Uh... Yeah, we're doing it. We're, we're we're doing we're doing well. Like there's 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 good numbers. It's sharing. I was a little behind on the Instagram game. I never had an Instagram account only up to. A you were you were Facebook. You were thinking yeah. Facebook was the end. Yeah. Yeah. So um, our Instagram is a uh, is only getting going really. So if you are listening and you want to support music by James McGrath on in Instagram, and. Are yeah, you, are you on TikTok? Yeah, we're on yeah, TikTok. Yeah. Music by James McGrath is the handle. That's the handle on all social, yeah. is it? Yeah. So yeah. Facebook, Insta, TikTok. Yeah. What else? X, Twitter? No. No, that's no, it. That's no, it. those. Th yeah. You have, uh, you, and music by James McGrath on YouTube yeah. as well, and and your website, of course. And we have Spotify and iTunes. You'll find me on all them. Yeah, and and that's how you're selling the album. It's all online, or is there, is there a hard copy? Oh, did I see your your, vi your vinyl as well? Have you? There's hard copies and vinyl on yeah. the way. Best to look with the, with the release. I'm uh, I'm thrilled to to meet you, and to play the songs on the radio. So it's great to hear them. It means a lot that you're playing them. It's so, it's so hard these days. To sure, get. you're one of our own. Why wouldn't we? I really appreciate it. No, no problem at all. And I wish you the best to look with the um, with the surgery. We hope that goes well, and, and you have a speedy recovery, and, and you're back out in Nashville in the spring. Isn't that it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much.